a toxic partnership, cybercrime, and espionage. The digital underworld is a murky place. Evil Corp, a notorious Russian ransomware gang, collaborated with the Kremlin. They engaged in cyber espionage against Western targets. This confirmed suspicions about Russia weaponizing cybercrime. Evil Corp exposed the vulnerabilities of our interconnected world. How could the international community respond to this growing threat? Digital Battlefield Targeting NATO Allies Evil Corp's campaign of cyber espionage focused on a particularly sensitive target NATO allies. Using sophisticated malware, they infiltrated government networks, critical infrastructure, and financial institutions across Europe and North America. Their goal was simple, steal sensitive information, disrupt operations, and sow chaos. One of their most notorious attacks involved the use of Dradex, a powerful banking trojan. Drydex allowed Evil Corp to steal banking credentials, intercept financial transactions, and siphon off millions of dollars from unsuspecting victims. The malware spread like wildfire, infecting thousands of computers worldwide. It caused significant financial damage and eroded trust in online banking systems. But Evil Corp's ambitions went beyond mere financial gain. They targeted organizations involved in defense, energy, and telecommunications, sectors critical to national security. By infiltrating these networks, Evil Corp gained access to sensitive data that could be used to compromise NATO operations, sabotage critical infrastructure, or even influence elections. The scale and sophistication of their attacks were unprecedented, demonstrating a level of coordination and technical prowess that pointed towards state sponsorship. Unmasking the Hydra The NCA investigation the UK's National Crime Agency, NCA, played a pivotal role in exposing Evil Corp's nefarious activities. Through a painstaking investigation, dubbed Operation Totem, the NCA meticulously pieced together the group's complex web of financial transactions, malware distribution networks, and online communications. What they uncovered was shocking. The NCA's investigation revealed that Evil Corp wasn't just a random group of cyber criminals. They were highly organized, well-funded, and operating with a level of sophistication that belied their criminal origins. Their malware was constantly evolving, their tactics were innovative, and their infrastructure was designed to evade detection. It became clear that Evil Corp had access to resources and expertise that could only come from a state actor. The NCA's findings sent shockwaves through the intelligence community, it confirmed long-held suspicions that Russia was actively cultivating and supporting cybercriminal groups like Evil Corp. These groups weren't just tolerated, they were actively encouraged to target Western interests. The line between cybercrime and state-sponsored espionage had been completely erased. The Tsar of Malware, Inside Evil Corp's Lair At the helm of Evil Corp was a shadowy figure known as Maxim Yakubets. Operating under the online alias Aqua, Yakubets was a prodigious hacker with a taste for the finer things in life. He flaunted his wealth with reckless abandon, buying exotic cars, throwing lavish parties, and even hiring a professional cameraman to film his extravagant wedding. Yakubets's brazenness was matched only by his ruthlessness. Under his leadership, Evil Corp became one of the most prolific and damaging cybercriminal organizations in the world. They extorted millions of dollars from businesses, stole sensitive data from governments, and disrupted critical infrastructure around the globe. Yakubets seemed untouchable, operating with impunity from his base in Russia. But Yakubets's lavish lifestyle was built on a foundation of stolen lives. Behind every successful ransomware attack, there were countless victims, businesses forced to close, families plunged into financial ruin, and individuals whose lives were turned upside down. Yakubets's callous disregard for the suffering he caused made him a prime target for law enforcement agencies around the world. Section 5. From Moscow, with Malware, a leader unmasked. The U.S. Department of Justice played a key role in unmasking Maxim Yakubets and exposing Evil Corp's ties to the Kremlin. In a landmark indictment, the DOJ charged Yakubets with conspiracy to commit computer fraud and abuse, conspiracy to commit bank fraud, and conspiracy to commit wire fraud. The indictment revealed the true extent of Yakubets's criminal empire. According to the DOJ, Yakubets wasn't just a cyber criminal mastermind, he was also a valued asset to the Russian government. 
He allegedly worked directly with the FSB, Russia's intelligence agency, providing them with access to stolen data and using his hacking skills to target individuals and organizations deemed enemies of the state. The indictment painted a chilling picture of a dangerous alliance between cybercrime and espionage. The U.S. offered a $5 million reward for information leading to Yakubetz's arrest, the largest bounty ever offered for a cybercriminal. The indictment and the reward were a clear message. The U.S. was determined to bring Yakubetz to justice, no matter the cost. It was a significant escalation in the fight against state-sponsored cybercrime. Section 6. Justice on the Trail International Sanctions Bite the international community responded to Evil Corp's activities with a series of coordinated sanctions and indictments. The US, UK, and EU worked together to freeze assets, disrupt operations, and bring key members of the group to justice. These efforts were aimed at crippling Evil Corp's ability to operate and deterring other cyber criminal groups from collaborating with nation states. The sanctions targeted Evil Corp's financial infrastructure, making it difficult for them to move money and launder their illicit profits. Banks were prohibited from doing business with the group, and individuals associated with Evil Corp were barred from traveling to participating countries. The sanctions had a significant impact, disrupting Evil Corp's operations and making it more difficult for them to recruit new members. The indictment sent a clear message that cybercrime would not be tolerated. They also highlighted the importance of international cooperation in combating this growing threat. By working together, nations could pool their resources, share intelligence, and coordinate their efforts to bring cyber criminals to justice. The fight against Evil Corp was a testament to the power of international cooperation in the digital age. Section 7, The Price of Impunity, Cybercrime's Global Threat. Evil Corp's activities highlighted the growing threat of state-sponsored cybercrime and the urgent need for a coordinated global response. The group's ability to operate with impunity from Russia, a country that often shields cybercriminals from extradition, exposed a major flaw in the international legal framework. The lack of a unified response to state-sponsored cybercrime emboldens both criminal actors and the regimes that support them. It allows them to operate with relative impunity, knowing that the consequences of their actions are likely to be minimal. This impunity comes at a high cost, undermining global security, eroding trust in the digital economy, and putting individuals and organizations at risk. The cost of inaction is far greater than the cost of taking action. The international community must work together to establish clear norms of behavior in cyberspace, strengthen legal frameworks to hold cybercriminals accountable, and develop mechanisms for attributing and deterring state-sponsored cyber attacks. Failure to do so will only embolden cybercriminal groups and the regimes that support them, putting the world at greater risk. Section 8, The Digital Iron Curtain, A New Era of Cyber Warfare Evil Corp's collaboration with the Kremlin signaled a dangerous new era of cyber warfare, one where the lines between criminal activity and state-sponsored espionage are increasingly blurred. This new era is characterized by the use of sophisticated cyber weapons, the targeting of critical infrastructure, and the willingness to inflict real-world damage for political gain. The emergence of cyber criminal groups like Evil Corp as proxies for nation states adds a dangerous new dimension to this threat. These groups provide states with plausible deniability, allowing them to carry out attacks without fear of direct retaliation. They also offer a level of technical expertise and agility that is often lacking in traditional military organizations. This new era of cyber warfare requires a fundamental shift in thinking about national security. It is no longer enough to simply defend against attacks. Nations must also develop offensive capabilities to deter adversaries and impose costs for malicious cyber activity. This will require a coordinated international effort to establish clear red lines, develop robust attribution capabilities, and impose meaningful consequences for cyber aggression. Section 9, United Against the Threat, A Call for Global Action. The fight against state-sponsored cybercrime is not a battle that any one nation can win alone. It requires a coordinated global response, addressing technical, legal, and diplomatic challenges. International cooperation is essential to sharing information and developing a unified front. This cooperation should include countries that are often havens for cybercriminals, 
the international community must strengthen the legal framework governing cyberspace, developing new treaties and updating existing laws to reflect the evolving threat, establishing clear norms of behavior in cyberspace and improving attribution capabilities. The fight against state-sponsored cybercrime is a fight for the future of the internet. It is a fight to protect our critical infrastructure, our economies, and our way of life. By working together, the international community can build a safer and more secure digital